Mike, when we try to analyze this unbelievable issue of free will, what can we learn by looking at brain processes in terms of normal conditions or perhaps abnormal clinical conditions? Well, let me, let me, let me try to explain aspects of neurology by, by providing an example. First, I'll seem a little remote, but, but maybe it's d designed to help you understand it. So psychologists have studied the evolution of the behavior as a child learns to walk. So let's say that a child is already standing and they're already cruising around and this and that, and they're learning, now they're learning to walk. So one of the questions to ask is, how, do, how does a child learn to walk, right? What, what variations in these processes are involved? Well, it turns out that there are a lot of things that have to be controlled to learn to walk. You have to control movements of your muscles and how they move in, 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 in rhythmic cycles. You have to learn to control your balance. You have to learn to control the variation of surfaces and moving on surfaces. A whole bunch of things have to be learned. Very, very complicated mm -hmm. ability, almost mm -hmm. impossible, you could say. Now, well, how does a child learn it? Do they learn to, to, to walk in a stereotyped way and, and, and then uh, from a very stereotyped and consistent way gradually elaborate it? No. Actually, what they do is they do every damn thing. And uh, that approximates walking in almost every form you can think of that keeps them from falling on their little keisters. And, and what they're doing is building in their brain organization of activities that are basically defining the principles of what it takes to control walking. You know, I have a trade-off between how I stiffen my muscles at a moment in time and how I control my, the balance, information from my balance organs or from my feet or from whatever. I mean, it's a complicated business, right? But basically what the brain learns is how to control these processes and all of its variations. Now let's move from that to thinking about a a mental process, in which I'm weighing various complicated considerations, right, in order to determine where my brain should move in action, right, or how it should respond to a right, set of complicated right, right. circumstances. It's not so different from that. In my history, I have a bewildering history in which, in a sense, my brain has gone through all kinds of mental gyrations and combinations and considerations that relate to actions in real events that are analogous to the one that's facing my brain at this moment when it has to make a decision about how to act. It also has a set of principles or rules or guidelines that it's learned, that it's been educated about. Let's say that I'm, I've been raised in an environment where, I, where I've learned the principles of a particular ethical principles of a particular religious tradition or a particular cultural tradition. I know what those roles are. I know how to behave. Mm -hmm. That's one of the considerations that comes into the balance, obviously. And then there's all kinds of other other influences that come into the operation of thought that come from all of the other prior circumstances that relate to it. That's inescapable. My brain is continually operating as a machine with complex associations that relates to the, to the things that have occurred as a function of their probabilities of occurrence, a function of their importance in their occurrence in all of my early history. Now, how would that determine how I act at this moment? Well, it's free. It's free. I will make a decision. I will act. Not every way, but in some way. I have a freedom of action. It's constrained, of course. It's limited. It can't go anywhere. And in fact, it's constrained. I could define it as a probabilistic map to some extent. But we have a powerful ability to operate relatively shallowly across the surface of this probabilistic map. We can control ourselves so that we can move over a lot of even strong possibilities to come from the pro probability that our, that our, the guidance from our ethical principles that relate to our fitting into one of the most important things of ours in, in, for us, our tribe, our group, our family, our nation, our whatever, our religious uh, order, that, 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 that can override a lot of those, you could say, influences and make us do the right thing. But with all of those influences impinging on us, right. Does that make free will an illusion? Well, it isn't really free, right? It's always constrained. It's constrained by where you've been. You know? But how constrained is it? Because we have the well, illusion. Well, in some people, it's damn constrained, right? I mean, if you ask me whether I should ever act, whether I should act kindly, kindly or violently, and my early life is full of violence, and mostly the violence has been imposed on me, I'm very much more likely to act violently. And, it's and, constrained, very constrained. And in other people, it's wonderfully elaborate. I like to think that I'm a very, and we call these people variously ethical or cultivated or whatever, right? I like to think that I have a wonderfully elaborate control of my free will. Of course, this is somewhat of an illusion, 
uh, that it's probably not nearly so uh, controllable as I imagine. The ideal, of course, is to nurture and grow this capacity so that we operate as, as reasoned and controlled human beings that operate most sympathetically, most under, with, with the greatest understanding in our, in, our, in our tribe or our family group or whatever. Let's, Let's take an exaggerated condition regarding the right. absence of free will and obsessive compulsive right. disorders, extreme right. cases. Right. In those cases, what can we say about the brain? Well, it's a beautiful example because actually what we do is we grow a, a, an activity with such power, such strength, that, we, it, it, that, that the brain wants to go there. It wants to command that behavior. It's a distortion in the brain. And it's, it's a product of a brain that can be easily driven in, into distortions, that can easily create exaggerated representations of things that result in uh, fears for classes of things or the, the absolute necessity to repeat certain acts and so forth. Well, that's certainly a challenge to the concept of completely. There are many such examples. You know, the psychotic patient that can't help do what their, what, uh, what their brain mind is telling them to do, even though we would say it represents a clear violation of their free and controlled operations. We actually blame people for that, amazingly enough. We know that many people really do not have complete control of their action because their brain is seriously wounded or because it's physically damaged and so forth. So we know of many examples, obsessive compulsive disorder is a clear example, where in a sense, the person can't be blamed, can't help, but do the repeated act of washing their hands 500 times or having to go back to the kitchen 40 times before they can get you out see, the door their like car. In cases like that, we know it's not free will. Right. I mean, it, it, they don't want to do it. You, you, they, right. they say they don't want to do right. it, right. but they, they do, do it. So we know it's not right. free will right. in that case. Right. Now. Does that indicate that in the normal condition where I'm sitting here, and I assume you're sitting here, and I think I can do pretty much anything I want to do now, but is that maybe an illusion because maybe maybe the same kinds of processes that affect uh, this obsessive compulsive in, in one direction sort of is affecting me in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a finely grained way where I think I have well, free will and I don't. Well, in a sense... Uh, your stream of consciousness is going somewhere, right? It's going somewhere. It's not. It's not just dancing around, and it's not completely. And you can't. I mean, you can you can guide it and say it's going to go here, but it, when you're sitting here and idle, it's going somewhere. It has somewhere to go. In other words, a thought leads to a thought, an action leads to an action. A moment of activity in the brain leads to a moment of activity. There's a flow. There's a process. There's an energy. There's a there's a motor, right? And the motor generates a movement, and the movement where it goes. Is, is absolutely determined by the complex interplay between how the brain is trying to control through its executive processes what it's going to allow to happen and what the probabilistic history of the brain and the importance of prior events in the brain are telling it to go, right? Mm -hmm. So it's always a conflict between, mm -hmm. between that, that, that probabilism and, and, and between the brain's own control, right? That's what, it, that's what it is. What a wonderful dance, right? A wonderful dance. So I believe in free will with limits.